From Andrew Barth Feldman leaving Harvard for the movie, to raising an entire genre from the dead, here are on-set secrets from No Hard Feelings. This was truly the opportunity of a lifetime for Feldman. Jennifer Lawrence spilled all the tea about how she got her Percy. The story's so fitting to the movie, you've no idea. So Andrew nailed his audition, like there were no doubts in anyone's mind about him being the lead. They were all super happy and knew he was the perfect fit for Percy. But there was a little snag. Feldman was supposed to head off to Harvard pretty soon. Can you believe it? Because they definitely couldn't. J-Law was all like, is that a joke? Like he was fully the character. There was only one thing left to do in this scenario. Ask him to drop his degree. What else could they've done? So Jen gave him a call and dropped the bombshell. She straight up said, I have really bad news. You're not going to be able to finish your semester at Harvard. And in true Maddie fashion, she said, he's going to have to defer or whatever college school words are. Now, Andrew chose to do exactly that with zero regrets. On the red carpet premiere, he said that the decision was clear for him since Harvard would always be there, but the movie wouldn't come again. He's also super passionate about acting and working with Jen on this one just taught him a lot. She showed him the ropes, how to handle fame and all, you know. She's a seasoned actor after all, but that's not what got her the role. J-Law's almost become a household name over the years, with blockbusters like The Hunger Games, Silver Linings Playbook, and X-Men. She's won more awards than she can carry in two hands, yet. That's not what impressed Gene Stupnitsky. The director knew he wanted her in a comedy based on what he'd seen in interviews and red carpet appearances. That's where her humor is really visible. I mean, she's gone viral more than once for how hilarious she is. So it's surprising that she's only had a couple of comedy roles over the years. That's not to say her acting chops didn't come in handy. There are some powerful performances in there. Surprising, I know. You wouldn't expect a raunchy, R-rated comedy to have some seriously deep moments. But that's the beauty of this movie. You put two great, hilarious actors together and they'll give you something you never thought you'd see. I'm not going to reveal too much here for those who haven't seen it yet. Just keep tissues around when you're watching it. There's something even more unbelievable than that, though. If you were wondering how they even came up with this whack idea, they didn't. But the actual story is much more insane. The listing on Craigslist was something the producers of the movie came across in real life. Can you believe it? So this time, if you were wondering, who the heck would do this? There are some people desperate enough out there. Seeing the ad inspired Stupnitsky, or confused him more. Because he had a lot of questions to answer. Starting from, who's putting out this ad? Who are the parents that are doing this? What's their son like? To, why did they think it was a good idea? Who answers this ad? And what's going on in their life? So you see, he had a bunch of questions. That's why he had to take it upon himself to answer them all. Guess what? I've got a bonus fact. He'd been looking to cast J-Law in a comedy. That's the conversation he was having with his producers when they dropped this crazy idea in his lap. Unfortunately, not everyone found it as interesting as him. No surprises there. Where there's an R-rated comedy, there's bound to be some raised eyebrows. So, they've made it to be this sex comedy. But let me tell you, people have pointed out some major issues overshadowing the comedy part. The whole movie is like filled with grooming and sexual harassment, which is not cool. There are scenes with Maddie forcing Percy into non-consensual situations. There's no end to the innuendos she uses and objectifies herself to try and seduce him, even when he's not interested. But that's not the only weird thing. Her behavior is also persistent and aggressive, and it just ruins any attempts at humor for a lot of people. Instead of being funny, it leaves this bitter aftertaste. You know, these things aren't funny in real life. And what's even worse is that Percy's parents are totally on board with Maddie's actions. The whole idea is them having no sense of boundaries. Who even asked someone to date their son? Hard. It just makes poor Percy feel uncomfortable with his sexuality and choices. It's just wrong to force that culture on someone who's not interested or consenting. Oh, and there's still more to this story. Let's talk about the age gap between Maddie and Percy. She's 32 and he's only 19, so there's like 13 years between them. Yeah, I know he's legally an adult, but the way they portray him, this innocent, childlike person, just makes the whole thing even more questionable. When you see it in the context of their ages, it raises some real moral concerns. There are these scenes where she tries to get him to humor her in intimate situations, like a lap dance and skinny dipping. The thing is, Percy doesn't even realize the sexual aspects of these situations. In one scene, he even comments on how uncomfortable her hips are, and then it cuts to him sitting on her lap, which honestly feels more like a child-mother relationship than anything else. But the worst is when she kidnaps him and locks him in her van. 
They try to make it funny, but it's just messed up. Luckily, Percy defends himself and Pepper sprays her, which is, like, the only reasonable reaction in that situation. These kinds of jokes might have rolled back in the 90s, but now, it just feels disconnected from reality. We've all seen American Pie and Not Another Teen Movie. The 90s and 2000s was THE era of sex comedies, all about guys being sex-crazed and chasing after innocent girls. No Hard Feelings has tried to flip the gender roles, but here's the thing, those plot dynamics feel so outdated now, especially considering movements like hashtag MeToo, which J-Law proudly supports. The aggressive nature of the movie just feels old-fashioned. And not only that, but No Hard Feelings also falls into these harmful stereotypes of adolescent masculinity. They make Percy's innocence and lack of desire seem weird since they turn it into a joke. Honestly, if you watch those sex comedies from back then, they're really tough to stomach now. They're filled with problematic stuff, like guys spying on women through hidden cameras, and then they try to justify it all by blaming it on teenage hormones. A lot of people online are complaining about the gender roles in No Hard Feelings. They're saying that if the roles were reversed, with Percy being 32 and Maddie being an innocent 19-year-old, the whole movie would have felt cringy and problematic instantly. And you know what? They've got a point. The movie's still got a fair amount of fans, though. They're calling it legitimately raunchy, as mentioned by Rob Wick from Flickering Myth. For others, it seems like the chemistry between J-Law and Andrew Barth Feldman is one of the highlights of the movie. Jennifer's comedy skills and her ability to bring the raunchiness have some folks, like Nate Richard from Collider, dubbing her the new queen of R-rated comedies. Although J-Law's got a lot of provocative moments, like rocking a skimpy pink dress, some film critics are pushing that the movie goes beyond just being a sex comedy. They're saying it's actually heartfelt. Dave Carger, the host of TCM, even expressed his surprise, saying, What I didn't expect was its gigantic heart. People are applauding Stupnitsky for capturing the charm of those early 2000s comedies. One fan on Reddit said, Actually quite refreshing to see a woman as the immature protagonist of a sex comedy rather than Seth Rogen. Others were just happy to see something other than a shitty comic book movie. Shots were fired. They also found the nude fight scene very funny. A Reddit user thought it was a clever move by the makers to show her body in a different light for once, not in a sexual way or anything of that sort. It's also been doing well at the box office, so safe to say that people are enjoying this return to R-rated comedies. It grossed $6.2 million on opening day and is projected to make $15 million during opening weekend. So which of the two are you? Did you enjoy the movie? Or do you think that R-rated sex comedies are a thing of the past? That's about it, guys. From raising an entire genre from the dead to Andrew Barth Feldman leaving Harvard for the movie, these were on-set secrets from No Hard Feelings. 